Bonjour ladies, how are you all doing today? I'm doing wonderful. So today I just wanted to chat about something that's kind of been on my mind, not just in our community, but with like life and society in general lately. There has been this um, this type of like forced acceptance going around where you just, where it's not even, I wouldn't even say it's acceptance, but like kind of like a, a, like a praise type of expectation where now the way people see acceptance isn't just, oh, okay, you accept me for who I am. You like me for who I am. You accept, you know, what I've presented myself to be. And instead it's like, you know, you have to worship and love who I am and you have to be on board with everything that I'm on board with. And I noticed this, of course, a lot in our community when it comes to the whole isms. And so uh, lately, the talk has been about uh, texturism, which I think is a great topic to go over because people um, seem to think that texturism is like one sided and it ha ev has everything to do with like type four hair and that no one with type three hair can experience any form of texturism. Why? Because if you open that gate, then, you know, you can't be the center of attention anymore. That's just what it comes down to, at least in what I've observed. And so in this new kind of i would say it, it comes from building up a more sensitive like supporting a more sensitive take on life and i don't mean like when because when you share your own experiences that's you sharing your own experience have your emotional moment have your whatever people will listen if they want to listen but you can't force people to accept or be happy with just every decision that you make and I've noticed, especially because YouTube did this for a very long, long, long time, and they still tend to do it, but it's like they don't, they're so afraid of offending people. And these social media platforms are so, so terrified, not just social media, but like news platforms, they're all so terrified of offending anybody because they've seen it happened time and time again where they lose money because they offended an audience and so now anything that could possibly even the most minute thing that could possibly lead to a community being offended they just want to nip it in the bud and i feel like that's also why it's been so hard for our community to kind of grow um at least in the earlier stages like right now we're flourishing a lot and i love it but if you look back like it wasn't always that way it was not always peaceful kumbaya uh, there were definitely a lot of issues and a lot of it came from the fact that YouTube would rather not recommend these types of videos. They would rather not, you know, encourage a community like this to exist because they don't want to offend other communities because other communities feel threatened by this presence. I would say the same thing happens in like conservative spaces, you know, they would rather not promote conservative spaces because it will offend others but the thing is once those spaces started bringing in money and once they saw the opportunity to make money they were like oh, okay well i guess we can give them their little corner right and i feel like the, it's kind of the same thing over here we are still incredibly small compared to other communities but i think they're more willing to let us have our corner because they're like oh okay they might be able to make money and we can put ads here or they can you know it so it come it's been like they they've been so afraid to offend people but now that they're kind of making money off of these communities, then they're a bit more inclined to show, you know, some more leniency. And so I think because they spent so much time being afraid and just knocking down anything that might hurt someone, we've kind of come into a society or at least in terms of like social media society, like not because things are different in the real world. Right. And then there are things that just mainly impact the media and your phone um in those spaces because that's how we're communicating right so that's that's what i mean by society uh real life might be a different experience uh government and laws are a different experience and international is a different experience but i mean here with the big companies that control things in, in spaces like youtube on spaces like spotify on spaces like uh x and you know news stations they have built a a society that is so afraid and so sensitive they feel like they need to be accepted so much and you know what i don't think it's an age thing um and i don't think it's just an age thing i don't think it's just a race thing i don't think it's just you know a sex thing or any i think it just has to do with communities that have the upper hand um that just don't want 
something else, you know, to happen. That they, they're communities that have an upper hand, they don't want to lose that upper hand. And so one might say like, oh, but these communities are, are actually at a disadvantage. These are disadvantaged communities that are just sharing their truth and they just want to be accepted. And you could say that, but if you are such a disadvantaged community, then how come every time you cry, every time you holler, uh, people come running? That does not sound like a disadvantage to me. It sounds more like you're in an advantageous position, but you see yourself as disadvantaged. So as far as you're concerned, you know, your cries are valid and everything you're doing is valid and you just want acceptance and you're not actually at an advantage. Someone else is at an advantage. It's not, it's when in reality, you are at a bigger advantage than you have ever been at before. And so it has led to this whole sense of like forcing everyone and everybody to accept everything that you do, everything that you are, every way that you present yourself, um, when that has never been the norm before. And I think it comes from being able to create, not only create your own spaces, right? Because we can create our own echo chambers, right? But also preventing other spaces that disagree with you from appearing. And we've noticed it time and time again how they try to, um, how like, for example, the black community trying to silence this community, um, how they will step in and attempt to copyright our videos, even though it's clearly under fair use because you put that out there. We didn't put that out there. You did, which will be explained tomorrow when I, when I release the uh, biggest YouTube bigger, YouTube's biggest yapper awards that I'm super excited for. There will be a fair use disclaimer because some people don't seem to understand how fair use works. You put it out there on a public platform. That was you, not me, sweetheart. Um, but it's like they try to silence communities that go against them. And then they claim that, you know, they're at a disadvantage, but we don't even get a chance to fight back. They just get to say, I'm hurt and these people are against me and then all of a sudden channels are taken down all of a sudden content's not allowed to be created all of a sudden demonetization happens all of a sudden you have to go and literally go out and create your own apps in order to feel safe so that doesn't sound like a disadvantaged community to me uh, but let's go into what what even is acceptance right because I feel like we've kind of been misunderstanding how acceptance works uh, so if you go to the definition, it literally just means to consent to receive something or to recognize something as valid or correct. So basically to agree with something. Um, it can be physical where like if someone gives you flowers, you can choose to accept it as like to receive it. Or if someone um, states an opinion or presents themselves in a certain way, you can either agree with that or disagree with that. It's pretty simple, right? But here's the thing. What has it kind of become? What has this whole idea of acceptance really transformed into? I think we've lost the point um, of consent, right? Because consent, I think, is you can't have um, acceptance without consent. And so now it seems like that part has been taken away. And now acceptance means that you automatically participate in something or you choosing to take part in something so if if i say like for example um if someone brings up um their hair right an opinion or they present their hair and they say um my hair is beautiful and they and they like and they are also interested in your opinion on that um you can say they're like do you agree that you know my hair is beautiful because i think my hair is beautiful and you could say, yeah, I agree with that. I accept that. I, I, I recognize that as valid or correct. Or you could say no. Now it's more of a, my hair is beautiful and you have to agree with that. Not only that, but you also have to partake in my affirmation as well. So you see what I mean and how it's kind of transforming where now you can't just state your opinion on something. You can't provide feedback on anything. You can't choose whether or not you want to recognize something as valid or correct um, when given the opportunity. Instead, you are now forced to automatically be in the position of someone who is participating in like validating that in, or taking part in something. So it's definitely become very far removed from an opinion and become like a state of being. And so, you know, 
I've noticed that people are starting to force others into that acceptance role, into that participation of their own personal issues, um, as well as forcing them to participate in the so-called solution to their personal issues. And I'm going to mainly discuss this in the context of texturism because I feel like texturism, that conversation is where this happens the most, where there seems to be like the most forced acceptance ever. Um, and it's, it's so interesting because again, these are people who are saying that they are at a disadvantage. Um, but if you were at such a disadvantage, then, you know, we wouldn't have, you know, companies taking products off the shelves or completely revamping their ingredients and completely bending to your will, uh, at the expense of someone else, if they were truly at in a disadvantage, uh, position. And I think they realize this, but again, if they start to puff their chest out and, um, stop acting as if they are in a disadvantaged position, then it won't work anymore. It won't have the same effect, right? So the example I'm going to use is about is mostly um, texturism. And I'm not speaking in a political sense, okay? We all know that the government has its certain obligation to individuals that, um, sorry, it's, it's obligations that individuals do not have. So I'm speaking in a social setting. I'm not talking about laws or rules or people who are in a position of power, such as the government that are meant to be, um, nonpartisan that are meant to have zero bias um i'm not speaking in that sense because they have a social they have a duty and obligation socially no one has an obligation to accept a single thing that you do okay so socially if someone says type three hair is the most beautiful hair right if they go on a forum like on reddit or whatever or they go on lipstick alley and they just say i love type three hair i think it's beautiful people are now given the opportunity to either recognize that that as valid and correct or to disagree, right? And so the thing is, someone might say, yes, I disagree or, you know, uh, sorry, yes, I agree or no, I disagree. Okay, so how a person feels about either answer as well as how we choose to state our acceptance or denial is what makes the interaction personal. So between one and another, I can go and say, yeah, I agree. And a million people could say I agree or a million people could say they disagree, right? But in our social, our current social climate, that interaction kind of shifts a little bit. So if, when someone presents the idea of, you know, I love my type three hair. Here's what I love about it. I like type ha having type three hair. What do you guys think? Now, when someone goes and says, yeah, I agree. Or someone, you know, decides, yes, that that's something that I also agree with. Someone else always has to tag along and try to change your mind. Someone has to tag along and try to force you to accept a their point of view and their point of view is typically opposite of what it is that you just agreed with so they'll say like um you know well i actually type three hair is sad and third no, 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 i don't like type three hair or actually type four hair is the most beautiful hair and you guys suck for thinking that type three hair is the most beautiful hair and here's the thing the original conversation was about type three hair the original conversation between those people and people who are responding to it was about type three hair no one's talking about type four hair why are you bringing type four hair into this we we're talking about type three hair and you could go ahead and form your own and here's the thing right they could form their own independent idea and say under that forum no i actually think i i disagree i don't think that type three hair is the best hair and leave it at that but here's the thing if they do that on their own no one will listen People are most likely not going to listen. So what do you have to do? Got to sneak on to someone who is truly like, who is showing that they agree and someone who is like socially, socially saying, yeah, like I accept that I agree with that. And they have to go and piggyback off of that type of comment and try to bring someone else down. Why? Because strength in numbers, it's a strength in numbers thing. If you can get someone to change their mind, you kind of added someone else to your team, right? So it's like now we're kind of piggy now they're kind of piggybacking off people and saying no. And what's interesting, right? What's interesting is that that person has the ability to go ahead and give their own independent statement. Someone chose to give an independent statement about um, how they feel about type three hair and people can either choose to accept, like agree or disagree with it. And, you know, instead of going through the comments and fighting everybody who agrees that type three hair is amazing, um, you could either have your own opinion that stands alone, which might be ignored, which uh, clearly these people do not want, or you can go and make your own forum that celebrates the hair type that you are actually interested in. So you could very easily 
have your own forum. You could very, very easily talk about type four hair on its own. But here's the thing. I think people are absolutely terrified of doing that. It is much easier to break down someone else's opinion than to fully form your own and fully accept your own and, and not not even have to worry about their opinion. It's much easier to try to break someone down. So you know why they're instead of um, why they come under, under our comments and why they come under our mutual praise of one another. And they say these things because it's so much easier to go and try to break us down and make us cave, right? Because let's say that we are on here, we're talking about having type three hair and we love having type three hair. We think curly hair is beautiful, right? And we're all in acceptance. We're all in agreement. So we're like, yeah, we think type three hair is beautiful. Then here comes someone, right? Who disagrees, who again, instead of being able to state their opinion on their own and say, ah, I disagree. I don't really think type three hair is all that. Um, they will go under your comment, under your acceptance, and then they will wait for you to fight back, right? So they'll go under your comment and say, oh my gosh, you are, um, it's like, no, you're wrong. Um, I think you specifically like how, how dare you think that type three hair is, 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 uh, that pretty. Cause it's really not all that. Um, and then they'll bring up, you know, some, something else like, oh, I think type four hair, um, is better. And then you'll be like, well, okay, no one was talking about type four hair. We were talking whether about, about whether or not we like type three hair. So you could have just stated whether or not you, you like type three hair. That could be your response, right? And their response would be, oh, so you don't like type four hair or, Oh, so you think other hair types are beautiful, but not ours. They'll be like, what you're trying to, what this whole, whole thread is really stating is that type three hair is better than other hair. When that's not what we're talking about. We're saying that we love our type three hair. They're like, well, no, you must hate type four hair. So it's much easier to try and break someone's opinion down than it is to form your own. We see this also, we see this outside of textura, texturism time and time again, right? So if someone states, which this happens all the time on X, someone like a fan account will say Zendaya is a great actress and the people will be like yeah 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 I agree I think Zendaya is the best actress and there's always someone who comes and sneaks sneaks in under comments that agree with it and say so is Kiki Palmer instead of independently stating on their own that they think that Kiki Palmer is a great actress why why do they do that right it's the same thing over here or someone could say someone could have a Beyonce fan account and say Beyonce is a talented singer and a bunch of other people are under there like yeah I agree Beyonce's ta talented Beyonce's talented Beyonce's talented someone always comes under another comment right because they they're too afraid to make the statement on their own and they'll go well Kelly Rowland's better or I think Kelly Rowland's a great singer when that's not what we were talking about we we're talking about whether or not we think Beyonce is a great singer whether or not we agree with the original statement which is Beyonce is a great singer and, the, and again, if you don't immediately comply with them or if you bite back whatsoever because, you know, you, you that's not what we we're talking about, then here come the comments about how you don't like Kiki Palmer, you don't like Kelly Rowland because of colorism feature, white supremacy, texturism, we're a victim, yada, 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 right? They know what they're doing. The whole point, the whole point is to get you to think the way that they think and then they get mad whenever you don't. And then they have to pull out the the colorism card, the texturism card every single time. And and I think it really comes from a place of fear and projection. It's like a fear to projection uh, pipeline. So maybe if they were to have their own Kelly Rowland fan account or their own account and they said uh, Kelly Rowland is a talented singer and the and the response isn't overwhelming acceptance or maybe it is. But there's too many denials um, as well. Too many independent people saying that they disagree. Uh, then it makes them nervous and it, and it causes that fear. Because it's like, well, I think, she's, I think she's amazing and I want everyone else to agree with me. But then it's like, why are these people not agreeing? Well, they, can't even ex they can't even enjoy the, the presence of people who do agree with them because they're too focused on those who don't. So then, after, so then that fear seeps in. And then the projection follows, right? Because they would rather they would rather go to other people um, who are not even talking about Kelly Rowland. They would rather go, or not even talking about Kiki Palmer. They'd rather go under people who are talking about Zendaya, people who are talking about Beyonce, and project their opinion onto them. It's that fear, I believe, it's that fear of possibly not being accepted that causes people to project onto your acceptance of others. So they're so afraid of 
had their own independent opinion and not being not being able to hold its own weight that they have to go onto other opinions and state it because then someone will listen then someone will look at them then someone will have an opinion of them so with and and, and it's, it's just very interesting to me that that happens so often and it happens a lot like how they'll say go get your own spaces no one's thinking about you no one cares about you then they turn around and come to your spaces and project their feelings why because they're fearful that of us having our own spaces mean we're not listening to their opinions we don't care about their opinions because we're forming our own over here and if they don't think that they're getting enough attention they have to come over here and then slide in their opinions because then how else will we listen Here's, here's where I also think it gets very interesting. When someone tries to force acceptance of something that they don't even believe in themselves, let alone represent in themselves. Okay, so again, going back to texturism. Okay, within texturism, many women who would rather wear wigs at Reeves still require everyone else to accept their natural hair. So they will, they will present to you a wig or a weave um and but they don't want you to provide your opinion or acceptance or denial of the wig or weave they want you to talk about what they quote unquote think think matters more but they didn't present to you what matters more they didn't even give you that option to speak about what matters more because they themselves refuse to present it so if you're presented with their wig or their weave and you accept that their wig or weave looks great on them They'll often turn around and say, so what, you don't like type four hair? You don't think natural hair is beautiful? When no one was sitting here denying that type four hair is beautiful, but because you don't go around and parade your type four hair to people, you don't go around and represent that and present that, people can only really provide their acceptance or denial of something that you present to them. So the question here has nothing to do with even liking or not liking type four hair. The real question now is, why should I have to provide acceptance for something that you aren't willing to present? Something that is, you know, we're having an A-B conversation, right? We're talking about the wigs and weaves. You want to bring in the natural hair. But you don't want to showcase the natural hair. People can only really provide much of, of an opinion on what is presented to them. So if you're constantly wearing wigs and weaves, then that is what you will receive people's acceptance or denial of if i don't see your natural hair I, I i can't really choose to have a positive opinion on it like you want us to have a positive opinion on it you want us to think your forcey hair is beautiful you want us to talk about how gorgeous type four hair is but you aren't wearing it and i'm not and, and I'm, I'm quite literally speaking in the instance because we'll get to the people who are wearing it but i'm speaking in the instance of people who aren't right Seeking acceptance for something that you're hiding away makes no sense to me. Okay, you barely discuss your hair. Why should someone else discuss your hair? Why should anyone feel the need to talk about your hair type when you, when you barely present it as an even, as even an option? But then you get upset when it's like, guys only like me when I wear wigs and weaves. You only show confidence when you wear wigs and weaves. So how, how, how can a person anybody be like oh yeah i i like your type four hair i barely see it i've probably seen it once in a blue moon okay so now let's talk about the people who do wear their natural hair but they don't receive the acceptance they were looking for now notice how throughout this whole time i've been talking about acceptance or denial because at at the end of the day choosing to accept something is a choice choosing to agree with something is a choice choosing like it, it all comes down to choice and the main conversation we're having right now is how people are trying to take away other people's choice so let's say that someone says type four hair is beautiful you are opening the door for people to agree or disagree with you right so instead and, and you're gonna get people who are going to say that it is it isn't and that's that's them forming their own opinion i'm not talking about the people who are going to try to slide in under under comments that agree with you and try to make them change their mind i'm talking about people who independently just say i don't think it is or i disagree right instead of being able to focus and keep their focus on people who do provide them with the acceptance that they are clearly looking for otherwise why would they post that 
And I go, I say that for all of my examples. Why would you post that if you weren't seeking acceptance and someone to agree with your opinion? Um, but instead of focusing on those who do, they focus on those who do not. And that is where the problem stems from those who do wear their natural hair, but aren't getting the level, acceptant, level of acceptance that they were seeking. What starts to come out? Fear. That same fear to projection pipeline. So instead of saying, you know what? Like maybe, maybe you, you're getting the responses you didn't want on something. And you're like, I was thinking more people were going to love my type for hair. I was thinking more people were going to say that they think it's beautiful and amazing and wonderful. By the way, if you hear my neighbor's dog, I am so, so sorry. He just loves barking at the worst times. Um, but let's say, you know, they're not getting a response they want. Are they sitting around saying, you know what? Those responses don't even really mean that much because I still love my hair. That's not usually what happens, right? We know because we see this. Okay, we see them do the same fear to projection t pipeline where because they didn't get the praise and worship that they were expecting, they then go under type three hair n or non-type four hair and place what they want to be accepted under someone else's acceptance of type three hair. I know I'm saying that word so much, but I'm trying to make it click, right? It's so much easier to force someone else to agree with your opinion than it is to be able to be comfortable in your own opinion. And I'm pretty sure there is a psychological aspect of this, but I have no idea about anything regarding psych psychology. I'm sure I could do like some quick Google searches, but I will probably put out the wrong thing. Uh, I'm sure there is a psychological aspect of this, but it's just something I've noticed when people trying to go in and force others to think and breathe and act the same way that they do and to automatically find something beautiful when no one has to automatically find anything beautiful. It, now, now there's a difference between not finding something beautiful and trying to hurt a person. Those are different things. I think those are very, very, very different things. But don't expect, the, the, like, and I have to say this, to a lot of my unambiguous black women out there, a lot of the type four hair girlies, um, you can't expect people to just outright worship and praise you. That doesn't work. It doesn't make sense. People have free will and they have the decision to be able to state their opinion on something. Is bullying correct? No, it's not correct. When the government gets involved, is that correct? No, it's not correct. If an institution that has a position of power does something like that, is that correct? No. But what's interesting is that these unambiguous black women will go and talk about institutional power and um, white supremacy and the government and these people in power doing all these terrible things against them, right? But they have no problem when a platform like YouTube takes down a video they don't like. They have no problem when a company stops catering to their original target audience to cater to them instead. They don't care when someone else gets kicked to the curb if they're the ones benefiting. So how are you going to talk about institutionalization? How are you going to talk about, um, you know, the government is hurting you? How are you going to talk about white supremacy? But then your solution is to hurt someone else for your gain. Please explain that. That's why we say it all the time. They want to reverse it. They want to turn it around. It's not really about, um, or maybe it used to be at some point, it was about, um, the unnecessary hate towards type 4 hair, the unnecessary hate towards dark skin, right? But instead of finding ways to change it that would actually uplift the community, such as maybe not bullying your child or telling your child that they, you know, are ugly and, and that dark skin is ugly, or, you know, maybe, you know, maybe uplifting, maybe uplifting your cousins or helping your, your parents come to love themselves uh, the way that you wish they would have loved on you. Um, or, you know, maybe the solution probably isn't to say that we should just abort all black males. Maybe, you know, it, it's like there are ways that you can handle this and tackle this within your community that they just refuse to do and instead make it the responsibility of someone else. And so I say like this whole forced uh, acceptance of hair textures, this whole forced acceptance of skin colors, you're going to have more people who will purposely deny you now just just because they hate being forced to accept you and they might not have had a single problem 
showing you love, showing you, you know, grace, actually uplifting you. But now, now that you've made it and made it seem like it's their responsibility that they are now required to. Now, now you've got people who will purposely say, no, I won't. And now like, so now it's like, you can't, you can't win. You can't like this, this whole path people are going down where they're like, I'm going to take down every opinion that I disagree with. I'm going to make all these companies, uh, I'm going to force all these companies to change their ingredients to fit me. I'm going to do everything, even at the expense of others, even though I supposedly hate institutionalization, even though I support, even though I absolutely hate uh, supremacy in any form, I'm okay with us being the supremacists. Or how you say racism doesn't exist for black people. So racism is, is awful when it's against you, perfectly fine when it's against someone else. Why? And I hear this all the time. You know the reason why? They say it's because we had it coming. And that's disgusting. Um, so yeah, I, I find it very hypocritical, very frustrating. This whole idea of being forced to worship and praise people, being forced to worship and praise certain phenotypes. The same, the same thing with like, oh, if you think we're, if you don't think we're ugly, then date me, huh? Like what? What is that? What is with that narrative? I hear it all the time. This whole, well, if you really thought, if, if white guys really thought that black women were beautiful, then, then date me. No one has to do that to prove anything to you. Maybe they don't want to be with you because of your personality. I've talked about that. Have you heard that video? Have you watched it? Have you listened? You probably have. Um, especially the weird stalkers on this channel who think I don't notice them. But I notice you, boo. I do. Um, it's like no one is, is for, no one has to be forced into these roles. No one has to be. And, and the reason I choose to focus on the texturism, colorism, featureism, ism, ism, ism community uh, is because it's the one that most that definitely impacts me a lot where it's like. Someone told me that if I, if I truly loved uh, my blackness, I would wear my hair in an afro more. Do you know how much work it takes for me to get my hair into an afro? I, I did it once, one time, like two years ago. Quick story time. I put my hair, I brushed my, okay, so I, what did I do? I wet my hair, I made it damp, and then I just brushed and brushed and brushed it out. And then I had to keep brushing as it was drying because it would just keep curling up. And so I had to, and then I like got a pick or whatever. I didn't really have a pick. It was more like a comb. And I just combed and combed and combed and brushed and brushed and brushed in order to form that afro. That I didn't do it because that person told me that I needed to. I did it because I wanted to see what I would look like if I had 4C hair. Um, and beautiful as ever, of course. <laughs> I thought I looked perfectly fine. But it was so much work for me to change what I naturally was in order to become something I naturally wasn't. And so imagine if I did that all the time, every day, just to prove my blackness. What, that would be crazy. And my hair also, I lost hair and it was super tangled. Um, thankfully, just like some water helped. But it was like, it was frustrating to think that like I had to go through all that to make my hair look like another hair type. And yet someone out there truly believed that that's something, that, that was my duty. That's something I needed to do constantly in order to prove my blackness but then when someone like zendaya goes and puts on a 4c afro which you don't really see these you don't see these unambiguous um actresses really doing that you, you don't see them wearing like you know you don't really see it that often I'm not saying it's never happens but it's like you for you tell her she needs to accept her blackness and and love her blackness you say that to mls girls all the time and then when they turn around and do it then it's a problem so it's like you want us, you push us, you push us to do this whole force acceptance thing. And for what? There's not even a light at the end of the tunnel. You just wanted the praise. You just wanted the praise. Really, really what you wanted. And I say this all the time in my videos, what you wanted was for us to just praise you and worship you and to shut up. You didn't expect Zendaya to come out in a forcey wig after praising and loving on your forcey hair. Why? Because well, you're only allowed that luxury. But once she does it, it's a problem. It, she couldn't, you're not allowed to go past the praising part. You just got to get to the shut, shutting up part and then we're good. It's like, you, we can't, we can't even go and try to represent that part of ourselves. Or if we wear box braids and you're saying that we look awful and that, you know, it doesn't look good in our hair and that our hair is too weak and our hair is cursed. So we can't wear um, braids. 
So it's like, but then, and, and then you see, we have to learn, we, we try too hard to look not black. <laughs> so there's literally no winning. This whole force, that's why I say this whole force acceptance thing is a lose-lose situation. The whole point is to reverse it and put them on the pedestal. And to put them and make it them the, the quote-unquote pretty girl celebrity person who just gets everything that they want because that's what they think our lives are like 24 seven. Um, so yeah, that's just something I wanted to discuss and I would love to hear what you guys think about it. Do you feel, you think I'm crazy or do you feel like, yeah, there's like definitely this era. We are like in this era of like forced acceptance in the sense of just having to praise and worship everyone for things that we probably don't even really care about that much that they care about and because they care about it that's why it matters and should matter to everyone else um so yeah really interested to hear your thoughts and with that i will see you in the next one and i'm so excited because tomorrow we have the one and only youtube's biggest yapper awards coming up so keep in mind if you hear yourself there fair use is a thing baby you posted it i'm just reposting it and with that have a great great evening Alva, ladies